So a little bit about me is I, I call myself a normal girl. So I come from an average town, from an average family in Wales, and I had no real stimulus to, to question the status quo because everything was comfortable. Yet I think from a very early age, I had something inside of me, like a little fire that was burning to, to leave a legacy that something had to be bigger than just a, getting a job or conforming mm. to living society's tick box lifestyle. So I started to sort of push the boundaries, but staying within what was acceptable. And today I, I help other people remove the glass ceiling off their potential, both professionally and personally, whilst also living a sustainable lifestyle. Because for me, I believe that we can, everyone can win, basically. We can all thrive and not push somebody down. So how I accomplished that, coming back to your question and what I've done, it, it's a polka dot through life. Um, trying to conform, I got a double master's in mechanical engineering. I worked in aerospace briefly and realized very quickly that this was not for me. My passion was always to work with people to see you know, changes immediately rather than live this conformist lifestyle. So I traveled quite a lot in Latin America, helping create micro businesses in indigenous tribes where most people don't even speak Spanish, let alone heard of the language English. And mm -hmm. that could be as simple as freezing ice, um, freezing bananas to create ice cream popsicles or yeah. being able to re you know, rejuvenate uh, villages that have been deforested as well. And uh, it brought me eventually to Australia where I was living with my then boyfriends. We've both emigrated from Wales, if you haven't picked mm -hmm. up a little accent. <laughs> and we started hospitality. I knew I didn't want to go back to engineering and I wanted to learn business, but in business rather than through a book or theoretically. And so bought initially a Subway franchi franchise and quickly flipped that into a property, which I transformed into a guest house, restaurant and wine bar. And did that for seven years. So that satisfied my traveling spirit because I met a lot of people who were traveling through my life albeit it wasn't me the one as the voyager and um we also my partner and i it was going through quite tumultuous times and we eventually broke up six days before our wedding mm. and that didn't just leave me emotionally distraught it also left me financially uh right. struggling he left me with a million dollar debt and um just questioning a lot of why on earth Am I here? What has happened? You know, why should I deserve this? It left me in quite a lot. That victim state we hear being thrown around. You know, why me? Why now? I'm a good girl. Why did I get punished? So it felt like, and it, uh, that was sort of the light bulb moment. I was at the metaphor, metaphorical cliff edge mm -hmm. where we sort of can, we're going we're gonna to fall, but we can either jump and learn to fly or fall and try and scramble up knowing that it's kind of futile. So I chose to jump and put faith that my wings would learn to grow as I fell. Um, wow. Well, it wasn't a very healthy wedding uh, relationship. Uh, the analogy I give is you put a frog in water. If it's boiling, it'll jump out. But if it's cold and you slowly turn up the heat, you can, you can cook it. I was that frog in cold water. So mm -hmm. for nine years, uh, albeit it didn't start that way, it was quite a toxic relationship where I was questioned and challenged and, and undermined every single day where at the end I felt I couldn't, I could never say no to him on many mm. levels, uh, not mm. getting too deep in that, but I was sure. physically hurt as well as emotionally suppressed and I had, um, I wasn't allowed out of the house. If I did, the, his phone would beep and he would know that I'd left and he'd get a, I'd get a call to say, where are you going? What are mm. you doing? Why are you leaving? You've just spent $5 in this shop. What, what are you spending it on? So mm. I was in a very controlled place. Uh, my heart breaks for him too, because to be in that place of controlling someone else means that he was struggling heavily. It doesn't justify it, but you know, retrospectively, sure. I, you know, I wasn't helping him either. So on one level, I was immensely relieved because the future was not bright with me and him. We were not good together. I, I was a shell of a woman. Uh, I, I, I couldn't look in the mirror. I was borderline eating disorder as well. The only thing I could control was myself. So I became meticulous in mm -hmm. every aspect of me being perfect and good. So that included what I ate or didn't eat. Mm -hmm. um, yet also when, when he left, 
he, he was contributing to our mortgage and mm. the undermining of me not being able to cope you know you can't live without me you're you know you're lucky you you're, you're with me really mm. compounded I, I'm gonna fail I don't know mm. what to do how am I gonna run this business alone he maybe he's right maybe I am a loser and a failure and a whatever mm. else he called me so I really struggled for a few months I was lucky that it was peak season in our hospitality business. So I, I was very distracted by that, mm. but I was also very alone. My entire family were in the UK. So mm. I, I worked 12, 14 hours a day and, and you'd find me most evenings at the bottom of a bottle of wine as well, just to mm -hmm. take the edge off it. Sure. Um, so it was painful. And the hardest thing I had to do was sit in front of the mirror and just look at myself in, in my eyes and go, mm -hmm. you know, are you, do you like the person you see, let mm -hmm. alone love? Because this is who you have to live with for the rest of your life. And that oh, was the awesome. hardest moment.